Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'm going to review for you this little guy. This is the Timex Expedition Scout Chronograph. First off, I want to thank my buddy Josh, Journeywind Junk. I'll throw a link to his blog down below. He's a gear reviewer himself and reviewed this guy and sent it my way afterwards. So Josh, thank you so much for that. Next thing, let's do a size comparison real quick. Here it is against two other inexpensive quartz watches, Casio F91W and the uh, Casio F108. Here it is against a another nice uh, field option. This is the Citizen uh, BM8180, and here it is against my everyday carry watch of choice, the uh, Omega Planet Ocean here. Uh, so very different watches, uh, separated by an order of magnitude of price difference, but still. And then um, here's a standard U.S. quarter, and let's go ahead and do some actual measurements of this little guy, just so we get a better sense of things. Um, then I'll use millimeters, because that's how watches are done. The uh, face itself is around 36 millimeters. The uh, Including the crown, you get to about 46. The lug-to-lug uh, -lug distance on this guy appears to be 51 millimeters meters, maybe 50. Um, the lug width for uh, putting on another strap is 20. And uh, yeah, I think that should do it for measurements. Oh, and then the width of this guy. This is a little bit on the thicker side, although not actually all that much, like 12 millimeters, something like that. Not too deep. So um, anyways, there's your size comparison. And then uh, one other note, I've reviewed a three-hand uh, Timex Expedition watch before, so keep an eye out for that review. Uh, actually, don't keep an eye out, just go look for it. It's already online. But anyways, uh, there you go. Let's jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your little Timex Expedition scout here. First off, on the good side, this is a quartz watch, and that is a beautiful thing. It means it's going to be very accurate, and indeed it is. You've got a long power reserve, a couple of years on the battery, no problem. And uh, you get other features that would be completely unobtainable in a mechanical at this kind of price point. So I love the fact this is using a nice quartz movement. It also has a date feature here. You can see here it is the, uh, the well... This is saying it's the 28th. In fact, this is the second take. I adjusted it backwards previously. But um, anyways, uh, forwards, that is. Uh, but it has a date feature, which is great. I, I like that. Frankly, I need that on a watch, so that's good. Next thing, um, this uses a uh, chronograph movement. So what I mean by that is that if I hit this button here, it will start and it will time, and it will time, and it will time. It'll give me 30 minutes worth of counting here, and then second hand is the big second hand there, and then actually when I stop it, it shows this other interesting feature. Keep an eye on this sub-dial right here. When I stop it, watch. It goes there, and that indicates that I paused this guy at 16 seconds, point th or, uh, and then, you know, 3.5 twentieths of a second after that. Um, that's kind of interesting. It's different. It's something that you couldn't do with a mechanic. Well, you can, but it's it's a questionable with depending on the beat rate and whatnot. Anyways, um, but look, you can get a very, very, very precise timing on there. That said, at some level, let's be real here. Human reaction time does not allow sub-second sorts of timing accuracy. I think we've got like 200 milliseconds worth of reaction time. Easy, easy, easy. So, you know, don't put too much stock in it, but it is kind of a neat little thing. Next thing, this is water resistant. 100 meters worth of water resist, which means you don't worry about water with this guy. Strap, not water resistant, but the rest of the watch sure is. So you throw this on a NATO, you've got yourself a swimming companion, no problem there. There are some nice signs of quality with the watch too. The case on this guy is brass, actual metal throughout. There's not a hint of plastic on the whole damn thing, which is something I appreciate very much, um, especially given that lower end watches can be very plasticky very quickly. Um, this has a feeling of quality there. Similarly, you've got a nice matching branded buckle here. If the strap on it is absolutely fine, complete with this little bit of threading, which tends to make things look a little more attractive. And then one little feature I'll highlight here is look at the uh, the, the rehout here, this ring on the outside of the watch. You can see that they've actually cut little slots in it uh, at each hour marker so that those can sit inside there. It's a little detailed, but it gives the dial a little more dimensionality than you might have otherwise had, and that's something I appreciate very much. So a lot of signs of quality here. And then finally, this has an indiglo feature. What I mean by that, and you've seen it come on a couple of times here, but if I shield the light from the watch or vice versa i can do this and see here it is now illuminating uh, hold on there we go focus in it's now illuminating the entire dial from behind so not only can you see the hands but you can also see the hour markers you can also see uh, the the chrono markers i can start the chrono and you can see and read the chrono even while this guy is running and so that's kind of neat. In fact, this is the only analog chrono I'm aware of that is completely readable in the dark, 
which is great. And in fact, if I stop the chrono, it triggers the uh, the, the Indiglo again, and if I reset it, so you can do that, and that's that's pretty excellent to me. So I, I like that very much. It's a feature that you don't get on higher-end watches ever. It's an advantage of using quartz, and I think it's a Timex exclusive. You can get other digital watches that have light to them, 100%, so for instance, this little guy does, but it's a different kind of light. This is, this is neat. So I like that Indiglo very much, and that's that's the good. The Indiglo, um, it's got some nice signs of quality here. It has 100 meters worth of water resist, sub-seconds chrono, 30-minute chronograph, date feature in quartz. Um, and I probably should have mentioned the price. It's 60 bucks, which I think is pretty solid. That, that That's good. No issues there. To me, what is great about this watch, though, 100%, is the independent hour hand. What I mean by that is right now the watch is running. You can see the second hand going down to the bottom there. I'm going to pull the crown out to the first position. You can see the second hand is still running. The watch is still keeping time. But watch this. If I turn this, I just jump forward an hour and forward and forward, 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 forward. It's still keeping time. My seconds remain accurate, but I've now adjusted by a bunch of hours. And in fact, if I keep going here, what you'll see, in fact, I've already done it, is that the date wheel advances as well. And so right now I can move the, the watch ahead by oh, 1030. There we go. And I can move the watch ahead, both to adjust the date, but also if I travel, if I get on a plane and I'm going to, you know, Salt Lake City, which is two two hours behind me, I can just do that, and then bam, I'm, I'm there. And my, my accuracy is not affected. I'm still keeping good time. And similarly, when I come home, just do that. Or daylight savings time, bam. Oh, it was two hours. But still, look, independent hour hand is one of the very best complications on watches, in my opinion, at least one of the most useful ones, because it just, it makes life so much easier, and you don't lose the accuracy that you set in the watch. So I like very, very much the independent hour hand thing. That's great, and I love seeing it in budget pieces. Usually that's the, the, the that's the, that's in the higher end world, or in the digital, uh, you know, digital world. It's great to see it this cheaply. So to me, that's what's great, is the independent hour hand. On the bad side, first off, I'm um, the Indiglo uh, on this guy is is fine. It does not give you the date. Um, that's completely a nitpick because, well, no other watch with Loom gives you the date either. Actually, that's not true. I think Lange has one that does, but that's many, many tens of thousands of dollars. Um, but anyways, that's beside the point entirely. Um, but that, that's a little detail, something to keep in mind. Next thing, um, this has a 30-minute chronograph. I already talked about that, but you can see here the chrono register is 30 minutes long. What this means is that this will keep time for 30 minutes. After that, it will just kind of keep cycling back around. That's not ideal, because think about the things that you might want to time. Something like a parking meter, or a pizza delivery, or a presentation, or something like that. Most of the things in my life that are worth timing are longer than 30 minutes. And so the fact that it just recycles after 30 minutes, and you don't even necessarily know how many times it's recycled, uh, I don't know that. Um, It'll keep cycling, but yeah, I would much prefer that they had skipped the, 20 second, uh, the, the 20th of a second dial and put an hours dial right there. That way you could get a 12-hour chrono uh, very, very cheaply, and th that would be much more useful for a lot of people, I think than the freaking 20th seconds gimmick, which, uh, yeah. So anyways, a 30-minute chronograph is a little bit weird and frankly just isn't a great use of a chronograph. Next thing, this is a mineral crystal and it will scratch, and indeed it already slightly has. I'll see if I can show it off. There, there, there it is, yeah, a little scratch in there. That's just the nature of the beast with a mineral crystal dial rather than the sapphire, but at 60 bucks, I can't complain too much. Next thing, Timex makes some loud watches, especially with the chrono going here. Let's see if you can hear it. I'll put it right by the mic. Okay, um, this may seem like a little bit of a nitpick, but in a quiet room, and particularly if you set this guy down on like a desk or something, where it's got effectively a soundboard, that's not great. Um, you will hear this guy way louder than any other watch by, frankly, any other company. Comparing it to Citizen, comparing it to, oh, anything, this is a loud freaking watch. I don't know what Timex is doing that does that, but it's a thing. Next thing, you can see here on the second hands of the Chrono that not only does the second hand not reliably line up once you get past a certain point, but it also has that Timex hand and waggle where it's like over and over and over again um that feels really janky to me i mean yeah it's working it's keeping time but why timex can can we not fix this it's a little detail, but it drives me nuts every damn time and finally to me the worst thing about this watch by a mile is the readability of it 
This watch is not super easy to read at a glance because there is a bunch of stuff going on here. You have Expedition Chronograph written in, in relatively large font about the same size as the Hour Hand in the same uh, color as the Hour Hand, etc. Uh, all of the stuff written on the dial, in fact, is the same color as the loom in the hand. Well, not loom, I'm sorry, is the paint in the hands there. Um, and given that you have all of these sub-dials as well, as well as the big second hand for the chrono with a really large counterweight on the back of it here, this is a watch that takes a little bit of time to read. It's not bad, but compared to something like this, which is readable at an instant anytime, I, I don't love that. The readability here is just not great. And then add to it the fact that the hands on this guy are completely dull. There is no element of polish to them whatsoever, which means that in poor light, they're going to be very hard to read. And you don't even get the contrast of reflective hands against the... Because uh, see here in this light, the reflective hands make them a little bit stand out more. That's just unfortunate to me. And so the readability of this watch, because you've got all this crap on the dial, including the unnecessary things like Expedition, Chronograph, etc., just it suffers, and that's just not great. So to me, that's the bad, is that it's not a super readable watch. It has the Timex hand waggle thing. It's loud like every Timex is. Mineral Crystal is, eh, okay, for the price, I guess. A 30-minute chrono is not super useful, and the Indiglo uh, does not give you the day. But that's not a big deal at all. Um, the ugly on this watch is that there is zero chemical loom. I, 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 this blew me away. You know, I, I, a big part of my, I'm a loom snob. I love chemical loom. I love the fact that hands will, here, I'll, I'll use this guy as an example here, charge this up off screen here with a flashlight. But chemical loom is a substance that is applied to a watch's hands and indices that will make the watch glow overnight. Uh, so even if there's no light at all, you can still read the watch very nicely. Um, they have not done that here. This is all just paint. That, that's it. And that's not great, given you have the Indiglo thing, but the Indiglo requires two hands to do. And it is relatively bright. And so if you wake up in the middle of the night with this guy on your wrist, you don't know what time it is until you manage to get another arm and, and pop that down. Is it a big deal? No. But it is just lazy. I'm sorry, Timex. At least do something, Loom, there. Um, that, that, that bothers me. And it was like, when I saw that, it was just like, holy crap, that's just paint. And so even crappy Loom would have been better. At least you're gesturing towards it. So that's, to me, ugly, is that they didn't bother with chemical Loom. This makes it okay, but uh, lazy, lazy, lazy. Um, let's go to the final conclusion here. And my final conclusion is that, well, this isn't a jewelry watch. I mean, there's not a single polished surface on this. And although it'll work fine with some looks, it may not be the peak of high fashion either, not that I'm a good fashion critic. This is instead a function-first sort of wristwatch. It keeps the time with relatively little fuss. It happens to include a, a chrono, which is a nice touch for some, and it's got the Indiglo thing, which can absolutely be nice, especially if you are underground as a mole person for many weeks at a time without the ability to charge a chemical loom. Sorry about that. Um, the price on it is absolutely fine. It's 60 bucks, and you know what? The independent hour hand is great. I, that is, I have to give Timex credit for that. If they're bringing that into their lineup, that is great and that is huge. I hope they standardize it throughout. But for me, I'll be honest, this watch is kind of a miss because I don't really need the chrono on this guy. Usually I'm timing things longer than 30 minutes anyways, and I do have a stopwatch on the phone that works fine for the rare occasions where I am timing something. And the legibility on this guy as a result of having all the subdials along with all the text is just not stellar. I would much prefer just the three hands here with a whole bunch less stuff going on in general. I think that would make the watch a lot more compelling and interesting. But that said, a lot of that is very personal, and this watch for the price is very solid. So if you want a chronograph to be able to time things, then this is a pretty damn good choice for 60 bucks. You're not going to find that many cheap chronographs out there um, that have a reasonably good feature set here. And so if you like the watch and the style speaking to you, you don't actually need chemical loom, and you need a 30-minute chronograph a lot more than you need the readability, then you know what? Honestly, it's not a bad choice. And this little guy might just belong in your expedition. Anyways, hope this is interesting to you, that you had a good time, and that you enjoyed watching this video, and mostly that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day, easily measured in 30-minute chunks. Have a good one, everybody. Bye now.